good afternoon everyone so today is 19th february and uh, as per my earlier uh, promise today i am starting problem solving uh, video stream also for my channel so today the first thing i should share like let me share you that how i can proceed and why this channel is important for uh, problem solving concept concept building why it is important because uh, many time this question is definitely coming in creator mind also that if already everything is available in the internet then why this new channel why we should create new channel what in my opinion i have seen lots of youtube video and uh, many people are doing great in in problem solving especially in dsa algorithm so there is no problem in it but what is the problem is that those all implementation like those all video youtube video or problem solving skills primarily focusing on competitive programming but I think uh, the person who are already experienced and they know that they are very much sure that and they are they can agree with me that uh, there are far gap between competitive programming and actual industry code base. And why this is so? Because uh, in industry, uh, when you are implementing any code, you are taking you should take care for many things which is uh, which is part of code maintenance or uh, code extendability, uh, your software cycles. So, so um, and then product lifespan. So you are considering those things in, in your code base. So if your code is not following like extensibility, it is not maintainable, it is not um, extendable, it is very difficult to maintain such code. And then uh, that kind of code is not much, I mean, I mean, structurally good considered for industry purposes, okay? So that's why I'm trying to map this gap with my experience. Uh, so I'm, I will discuss every problem here uh, by following four steps majorly. The first step is, understanding the problem statement with co given constraints. The second step is defining the test cases for which, which, which primarily required for verifying your implementation. The third step is, this third step can be divided into two parts. The first part is creating a overall, uh, I would say template of your solution, or maybe uh, I can say like, uh, if I, I would put the better word, just prepare the skeleton of your implementation first in terms of a structure, in terms of interface, in terms of data structure requirement in terms of some kind of uh, interaction of objects and like so and so forth. So the first part is create the skeleton. Maybe whatever I'm talking, it is more generous, but generic, but in problem to problem, maybe we don't require all these things in a skeleton discussion. It is only like we should try to first understand the overall implementation structure so that uh, you can easily verify that are you able to complete the complete problem requirement or not. Anyway, this is verified from the uh, test cases, but I mean, before implementation, you should try to create one skeleton of your implementation. And the second part is actual implementation, which where you can write your code, you, you write your business logic, okay? And the last step, which is the fourth step, there you will discuss the dry run your code and also try to uh, uh, verify your time complexity and space complexity. And if you think that, uh, is there possibility of improvement going forward of in future implementation, you might, if you have time, you can implement this thing in this way, which will give the better time complexity or better space complexity. So those kind of thoughts also can be put, put down, put down in last section, right? So these all will be implemented in this way. So, and this is mostly related with how we are doing in industry also, implementation in industry also, right? So that's why uh, this may, I mean, these kind of overall structure, you will not find any YouTube video until now. And there are videos and maybe there are n number of reasons. I'm not saying that those YouTube video, I mean, content creator don't know these things. They might know, but uh, in my opinion, if we follow this structure, probably we will build our intuition more logical and more industry oriented, right? So we, you will build the, our skill set more industry oriented, right? So that's why we are trying to follow this structure. Okay, let me go through the whiteboard now quickly and let me share you my, all these four points so that you can note down the first point. Okay, so hold on, hold on for, there is a glitch. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so one. So the first point is understand the problem statement. Problem statement. Okay, just hold on. Uh, yeah. So this is your problem statement. And the second point is okay, so before go to the second point, let's try to write some more sub points of this, understand the problem. Okay, so come here, a statement. And here, uh, like A, understand the problem 
statement the second point is understand the given constraint understand the given problem constraint okay and then second point here is create your test cases test cases for implementation verification okay so okay uh, the person who are already uh, experienced in industry they know that this is called test driven development right third a is basically a uh, <clears throat> 3a is okay so like um, here you can create a skeleton a skeleton a skeleton for your implementation for your implementation and second part is actual code of your implementation okay and the fourth statement uh, four step i will follow where i will do uh, various steps i mean multiple steps i have to run multiple step multiple step to verify the completeness completeness of your implementation so for example for example you can say that um, For example, you can say A is like um, first step could be um, dry run your code, dry run your code with sample cases. Okay. Then second point is if 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 failing, then repeat one to three. Otherwise, otherwise proceed next step okay and c is suggest the future improvement okay so these all uh, consideration would would help you to build why i am doing this because my main motive here is to introduce my main motive here is my main motive here is to put you on intuitive building intuitive building so what do you mean by this intuitive building the meaning of this is that uh, logic building is like uh, based on intuition of your problem so uh, usually you forget uh, many things which is uh, which is not very intuitive right In any logic which is built on intuition is uh, retained longer time than any logic just built upon without any intuition so that's why intuition based development uh, building of your logic would be very helpful in long run so my total focus will be to build the intuition and then also at the same time my focus is to give you the actual industry and uh, like problem solving these two together so it's not like industry practice is completely applied in problem solving that is not possible and that is not fairly assumption also right because uh, problem solving is a small task industry implementation or industry based requirement implementation is little longer task you have lot many things to consider apart from this problem solving okay so that's why but i'm just trying to give you the little bit more intuition towards the industry practices so that you will be after following these video courses and these i mean video series or practice doing i mean just practicing along with me you will be more ready for industry and if you are already part of industry then you will be skilling up in your day to day work also with by following these series so please follow it as per your requirement if you like it then share with others also these these approach so that other person can also get benefited okay thank you for today i have just planning to start for this problem like this is a uh, lead code number 2 to 6 invert binary tree so the problem is like um, as you see here that the invert binary tree okay so given the root of a tree given the root of a tree given the root of a binary tree invert the tree okay so invert the tree and return its root so for example if you try to see the problem here then uh, you can think of like this okay so this is something like um, so this is your 4 and then this is left child 2 right child 7 and then left child 1 right child 3 here left child 6 here left child 6 ah okay so left child is 
six and right side is nine okay and so this if you i mean this is the inverse inversely problem so that you are expected to you are expected to do here you are expected to do here four seven two then this is nine this is nine this is um, six right six then here this is three and this is one okay so this is your inverse tree okay and uh, so you should return this one you should return this one this would be your answer right now uh, another example i can see here is so another example i can show you like uh, here is another example right so it is like two one three and the answer would be two three and one okay so this would be the another example 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 two you would say okay so this is what you should do and if somehow your root tree is empty then you have to just like if input is just like input is root is equal to empty then output is also this is the example like if your input is empty tree then your output would be also uh, okay let's mention the uh, constraint now so uh, there are two given constraint in this problem so let's discuss the constraints now okay so the first constraint is the, the number of nodes in the tree is in the range of zero so the number of nodes in a tree is in the range of 0 to 100 and the second constant is the value of this node dot val is equal to in this way so this is the first constraint and thus this is your second constant right so these all are like this is first constraint and here is the second constant these two are the constant for your problem okay let's move on let's move on so next thing is uh okay so i hope my pro problem is clear to you what should you think on it let's let's think for a minute and then let's start again the solving the problem okay one small problem uh, easy kind of problem that's why uh, it's not worth to go through the all four steps i just uh, wanted to share today the strategy for channel for this uh, channel for problem solving uh, video stream uh, but uh, going forward i will pick uh, more uh, problem which is uh, which will be demonstrated with all those four steps and that would also i will try to share my the complete uh, structure how these uh, four steps will help you to 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 build your intuition more realistic to industry level 
uh, where test cases are important. I mean, unit tests are very important. Then code review is very important. Then, uh, I mean, completeness of your code is very important. Then how you are structuring your code is important. So all these is required thing for making your problem solving more realistic and closer to industry experience, right? So by that uh, saying, uh, I'm wrapping my video today and I hope I'm able to help you, help myself as well as your, you all in this journey. And so, yeah, let's, let's hope for the best. Thank you for listening to me patiently and then uh, your patience and your uh, like, comment, feedback is uh, important for this content creation.